Big Tech sure is putting all their eggs in one basket with this fake meat nonsense. Crazy considering it's all a complete lie. Meat isn't bad for you. Our decisions in what we eat have no significant impact on the environment and, if anything, this vegetable oil-based poison, aka Beyond Meat, aka Impossible Foods, is worse for you than any meat. Mark Robert, with over 10 million YouTube subscribers, recently made a video feeding Bill Gates with a fake burger to save the world, which was number one on trending yesterday. I imagine he was paid well over six figures to make this video, and as with plant-based meat being built on lies, so is this video. Let's take a look. That's me, that's the richest man in the world, and that's the burger I just made him. But there's a catch. The patty in that burger is made from this stuff. And the reason I can eat it raw is it's made entirely from plants. First off, he says he can eat it raw because it's made entirely from plants. But humans have been eating raw meat for many thousands of years. And regardless of whether that plant poison is cooked or raw, it's still poison. This is building off the idea that raw meat is dangerous, so ingrained in our culture, yet every high-end Michelin restaurant that Bill Gates likely dines at daily is probably serving plenty of sashimi, raw meat, hmm, feed the elites raw caviar, and feed the people plant slop. I've been loosely following the progress of plant-based meat for a couple years now, and allegedly it looks and tastes like meat yet it's made from plants. Now, at the top of this video, I feel like I should start with a confession. I eat meat, like, kind of a lot. I've had some form of meat at pretty much every meal since I was a kid. My favorite genre of food is barbecue. And so be that as it may, as a firm believer in the scientific method, I feel like it's time for me just to really buckle down and get to the bottom of this plant-based meat thing. And so today on my quest for answers, I'm looking at three main questions. Number one, how does it taste? And not just that, but how does it look and feel and smell? How successfully does it trick my brain into thinking this is real meat? Number two, is it good for me? If it does trick my brain, what the heck is in it? Is it just some kind of like lab chemical concoction? And also how does it compare to like the protein from a real burger? And number three, is it good for the planet? And on this one I have a hunch that it is, but is it like meh, that's a little better? Or is it like a hundred times better? One, does it taste like meat? Absolutely not. But most people are eating meat in the form of burgers, hot dogs, sausages, heavily masking the actual meat flavor. Two, it is some type of lab chemical concoction, and getting protein should be your last concern when you're eating poison. Three, good for the planet. I guess if you tell a lie enough times, it becomes a fact, right? Crazy how they never proved a man has had an impact on the environment, but everyone accepts it as fact. Maybe I should start going around telling girls I'm six foot two. Now I should say, a big motivation for me, and something I think even my fellow meat eaters could agree on, is that the concept of factory farms isn't great. The whole cows that have never seen a blade of grass thing, and pigs, which by most accounts are smarter than dogs, that live their entire lives indoors on crowded concrete. These factories are efficient. They're optimized for driving down costs, not for animal well-being. And I'm not trying to be a downer, it's just something I don't like to think about when I'm eating my In-N-Out burger or Chick-fil-A. And it's a lame excuse, but I feel like I sort of never have had a good alternative option. I mean, historically, this is a veggie burger, and nothing about this works as a burger for me. But in recent years, the strategy shifted to target people exactly like me, basically try to make it as close to real meat as possible, which reduces friction for trying a plant-based option. So their goal is, if I'm going meatless at the summer barbecue, instead of a quinoa salad, I can still enjoy the full experience of a burger with my friends. No one is thinking about tortured animals at McDonald's, buddy. They are happily scarfing down that burger. Also, why are you only showing animal factory farms? Why not show the millions of insects, rodents killed in plant agriculture? Show everyone how much monocropping and tilling the soil destroys the environment. And so on that note, let's get right into question number one. Throw this puppy on the grill. Sizzle. Definitely sounds like a burger and even smells like it. And you're getting like the fat dripping down, which is causing the flames to come up. The fat dripping down, AKA the poison vegetable oil oxidizing further. So, so far the experience feels pretty analogous to just grilling a burger. Mm. 
When I lick the fork, it definitely tastes like there was meat on this fork. All right, this cuts and feels exactly like a real burger. But before I officially taste it, I kind of want to know exactly what's in there. And to do that, I'm going to fly out to the two companies who are the leader in this space, Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods. At Beyond Meat, the first thing they showed me were the labs where they do all their research. Are these actual, are these actors or these are real scientists? And these are scientists, <laughs> yeah. Are this feels like Jurassic Park, you know, where they're like giving you the tour and yeah. And right out of the gate, they put my mind at ease and showed me a tray of all the main stuff that makes up their burgers. Apparently they work on not just the taste, but they have teams of researchers working on the texture, color, the smell, the grilling sound, even the same amount of calories and protein as a meat burger. Their goal is to make it as frictionless as possible for people like me to make the switch. So they have these for the color, coconut and sunflower oil for the fat so it sizzles on the grill, potatoes for carbohydrates, and then these for the protein, the majority coming from yellow peas. They show you a table full of fresh ingredients instead of the powder they are mixing together in vats. Those aren't the actual base ingredients. The real ones are chemically processed derivatives of everything on that table. These burgers are better for you because they have no cholesterol, but they do have saturated fat from the coconut oil, so you shouldn't think of this as healthy as like a plain salad with no dressing. Still feeding into the conventional wisdom that saturated fat and cholesterol are bad, a plain salad with no dressing? Are you a rabbit or a human being? This video is a perfect example of how the elites value the intelligence of the American public. Absolutely non-existent. They think everyone is some completely low IQ moron that just, well, the hell you? let me have the meat, I want the, it's like, fucking losing my mind. After getting the full tour, I was feeling pretty good, so it was time for the real test in the kitchen. I've intentionally kept my taste buds virgin. Okay, great. I, I haven't tasted it, and I, I had opportunities, but like, no, I wanna wait. No pressure, but, Next week, I'm going to meet Bill Gates. Yeah. And I have to cook for him. You're like a professional chef, right? I, I am. In the next like 20 minutes, you need to transfer all that knowledge from your brain into mine, okay? We started with their Italian sausage, made of course just from plants, and Chef Chris showed me some power moves to impress Bill with on the grill. I'm so scared. Cheers. Okay, cheers. Even putting flavor aside, I think Bill will be okay with a little bit of a juice. There's no way I would have guessed I wasn't actually eating real meat. That's pretty good. Cheers. Cheers. That's really good. I need one more taste. It's freaking good. Thank you. Next up was their burger, which it turns out was equally amazing. Genuinely, when you can surround it with burger stuff, it's really hard to tell. There's like, no way to tell. This is comical. He goes into this like state-of-the-art kitchen with these professional chefs. They put dozens of ingredients and seasonings on this burger. Then this clown lies through his teeth saying it tastes just like meat. No, it tastes like a burger with 15 other ingredients on it. And the only reason it might taste like meat is because you just grilled a regular beef burger on that same surface. It's why the Vegans going to Burger King like the Impossible Whopper so much for the meat remnants. I guess just like vegan girls probably ingest the highest semen per capita. No offense to you lovely vegan girls. My next trip was to Impossible Foods and they actually let me make a burger myself just from the ingredients in these bowls. So the first thing that we're going to do is add the water to okay. the soy protein and then we're going to add the potato protein. Okay. So the next thing we're going to put in is our magic ingredient. Which, do you know what this is? Uh, red number five. <laughs> <This> is <food. laughs> so this is our magic ingredient. It's called heme, which is short for hemoglobin. Heme is responsible for making meat taste like meat. That's found in every living plant and animal. You can get heme from soy plants. I see. Um, you don't have to get it from animals. You know, you guys talk a lot about this heme extraction from soy, but I've never seen you actually show it being made. What I have heard, however, is that all of these impossible food factories are located near certain facilities. Uh, I mean, uh, wouldn't be the first time that that's happened. Next, we added the cellulose-based culinary binder to hold everything together. And then finally, the coconut and sunflower oils. Do you, have you done any pastry work in your life? Oh, tons of okay. pastry. You're gonna like fold <laughs> and smush. <laughs> All my pastry work's shining through. You literally just made the impossible burger yourself. Like. Five, five little cups. Five, five bowls, yeah. One of them was water. One of them was water. So now I think it's time to cook one of these up. 96% of the folks who are ordering our product are self-identified meat eaters. I'm definitely your target demo. I grew up, like, if the meal didn't have meat in it, 
It wasn't a meal. When it delivers in that same characteristic that meat does, it really proves the point that we're providing a no compromises alternative for, right. for those meat eaters out there to right. make a different choice. This raised an interesting point. Meat has been cleverly marketed with being a real man because real men need their protein. That's what a man eats. Made from stuff guys need. Eat like a man. But the truth is, even meat eaters like me get roughly half their protein a day from plants by eating things that contain some kind of beans, peas, nuts, or whole grains like corn, rice, and oats. In fact, many high-performance athletes are switching to a plant-based diet because studies have shown it can help reduce measures of inflammation by almost 30% in just three weeks, and inflammation makes it harder to recover after a workout. So if a plant-based diet is good enough for Arnold Schwarzenegger, Kyrie Irving, Lewis Hamilton, Venus and Serena Williams, Nate Diaz, and a growing butt-ton of others, it's probably good enough for me and my weekly rec league soccer game. Ballin' like curry. Is that why all those professional athletes built their careers on eating meat? And now they are getting whooped like the little sissy puss boys they are after eating this plant-based slop. You can ultimately utilize this in any way you would use traditional ground beef. So tacos, lasagna, meatballs. You name it. It's so good. This is a plant-based burger, and look at the mess I'm making. So obviously, I thought their burgers were also really good, but I felt like I wanted a larger sample size before I felt truly confident feeding Bill. So I invited some friends to a local restaurant that serves Impossible Burgers. And the thing is, you can't always trust adults, because they might just change their answer to be nice. It's really good. Kids, on the other hand, are brutally honest. So we ordered them plant-based burgers too, but might have neglected to mention it to them beforehand. What do you think? It's really good. There's no meat in that burger. Wait, what? You're lying. Plants. What? <laughs> <laughs> that was a plant burger. You ate a plant burger. This, instead of meat, it was vegetables. It just tastes like extra juicy. <laughs> and so feeling more confident than ever, it was time to visit Bill, put my culinary skills to the test, and see if he could help me answer my final question. This is exactly what they want. A low IQ person with a poor palate from birth due to the lack of B vitamins and DHA from eating slave food, just stuffing whatever makes them feel good down their throats. Huh, duh, what, it's plants? It's not a burger, it's plants? Oh my God. These elite people want a bunch of complacent, incompetent morons doing whatever they suggest, whatever they breathe at. Just like the corn bores want you to blindly stuff yourself with that grade A corn stuffed Angus prom bite. So I'm back in Bill's kitchen. He's gonna be here in an hour and I need some groceries. Good to see you again. You? So I've been working hard in your kitchen. Perfect. You know what's funny? I bet Bill had his buddies over the week before to dine on endangered whale sashimi with elephant ribeye steaks. Hey, Billy boy, why not invite the carnivore master chef over and I'll, hey, I'll whip up something nice. And I kind of wanted to talk to you about plant-based meat and I thought maybe we could try them out as well. Sure. But as a control, I know you're a big fan of Dick's Burgers. So to kind of cleanse the palate, I thought we could just take right. a bite. That's the real thing. The real thing. As a non-Seattle native, I've got to say, I think this may be an acquired taste. Mm, yeah, you get used to a certain <laughs> burger. You get used to and so now it's time for my cooking. What do you think? It's quite good. Yeah, Billy boy, swallow that plant-based slop. Those are the only two bites I bet he's ever had of that impossible bullshit. I mean, that's light years away from what they used to make. Like the traditional veggie burger? Right. You know, the quality's gonna keep getting better. Mm -hmm. The, the plant-based guys are not done innovating. Eventually, they claim you won't be able to tell the difference. Hold on. Eventually, they claim you won't be able to tell the difference, but I thought that's what the host of this show was saying the whole time. Yet here, Bill is implying that it doesn't taste like meat. Next up was my killer bratwurst. Wow. 
Well, that's pretty good. Killer Bratwurst is suitably named. And at this point in my quest, I felt like I had a pretty good lock on questions one and two. So I asked him about number three. The agriculture sector is about 18% of overall emissions, but livestock is about half of that 18%. Wow. And almost all of that is beef. Is this like cow farts, cow burps? Slightly more burps than farts, okay. uh, but it's a mix it's a of mix. those two. Okay. To put that into perspective, that means that sector alone is responsible for more greenhouse gases than all the cars, trucks, trains, ships, and planes combined. Turns out it takes a lot of stuff to make a cow. So this is slightly more truthful than what most vegans will say. Bill said that agriculture is 18% of emissions, animal agriculture being just half of that, but to say that most animal agriculture is beef is not true. It's even more misleading to say that agriculture is more emissions than transportation. And are we ignoring the amount of agrochemicals and pollutants, dioxins and toxic stuff all of these large corporations are just dumping into the oceans? How about that impact? Very inefficient, particularly beef, is almost eight to one. You use eight calories. Right to feed that cow for every calorie of meat you get out because you're building bone and respiration for that cow. Now this was a really good point I hadn't fully considered. If you think about it, as humans, we're really solar powered. We eat plants, but they get their energy from the sun. Then you might be like, ah, we also eat animals though. But they get their energy from plants too, which again, get their energy from the sun. So when it comes to getting our energy from the sun, animals are an inefficient middleman. We get on average 10% of our calories or energy in a day from meat. That might sound reasonable until you look at the amount of resources it takes to make that meat compared to the other 90%. This whole argument goes out the window when you understand that cows, any animal, can be raised in a natural environment on pasture that has no negative carbon emissions. That is, if carbon emissions actually mattered for the environment. If you combined all the land in the US dedicated to raising animals, you would get an area like this. And then plus this much more to grow the crops needed to feed those animals. Now remember, all of that is for the middleman, for 10% of our daily energy. Now compare that to the amount of land needed for crops we actually eat ourselves directly. That relatively small chunk of land is where the overwhelming majority of our personal energy comes from. And it's not just land resources, but water as well. To end up with 24 hamburger patties, it requires the amount of water you see in this pool. That same amount of water could make 75 loaves of whole grain bread and 30 jars of peanut butter. So if I made myself a delicious peanut butter sandwich, which has nearly the identical amounts of both calories and proteins compared to this patty, and then I ate two a day, the meat would last me a little over a week, and the sandwiches would last me a little over a year. So that's the same amount of resources used, same amount of calories and protein to me per serving, one just lasted me a year longer because it's a much more efficient energy transfer method. Okay, I can't stand this nonsense. They are using the environment, the planet, the planet, as an argument for you to stuff your face with slave food. I have gone over this many times. The crops we feed our animals are not suitable for human consumption. It's an idiotic straw man argument that is a complete lie. Also, ignoring that a peanut butter sandwich lacks fat soluble vitamins and amino acids only contained in animal foods, far from the same thing. As vegans always do, simplifying things, not looking at the whole picture, guiding the sheeple on their way to plant-based glory. This is why a plant-based diet is a way more efficient use of natural resources. We could feed an additional 3.5 billion people worldwide if all countries just ate the stuff they fed to animals. And here's why that fact matters. Particularly as people get richer, they tend to eat more meat. If we don't do anything, this sector will actually grow over yeah. time. So you're saying not just the fact that there's more people and a larger population, but as people move up towards the middle class, they want to consume more meat. And you can certainly see that this is true when you look at the amount of meat consumed over the past 50 years. Given the resources required, a trajectory for meat consumption like this is simply unsustainable. A few decades ago, meat was considered a luxury product, but now it's a commodity for a growing number of people. In fact, the demand is growing so much, it now makes sense for farmers in the Amazon just to burn it down and to turn that forests into grazing land for animals. We've irreversibly lost 20% of the Amazon so far. And that's a double gut punch, 
because now not only is that more cow farts adding to climate change, but when you burn those trees, all the carbon stored inside them goes back into the atmosphere as the greenhouse gas CO2. American meat consumption hasn't really gone up. Beef has almost been cut in half since the 1970s in favor of turkey and chicken. Other countries are eating more meat though, because those people aren't as gullible as fat sick Americans, and those economies aren't based as much of shoving as much corn and soy down animals' throats, as well as people's throats in the form of processed food, <coughs> vegan diet. <coughs> One of the great tragedies about climate is that it's the poorest in the world, the farmers who live fairly near to the equator, that all this heat and flooding and droughts, they're going to suffer by far the most. If you're just trying to get people to cut back, don't eat meat, don't drive to work, uh, don't take trips. It's such a dramatic set of sacrifices that everybody has to engage in that without innovation, we're probably gonna go way past the two degrees. This is the new plan, how everyone will live. You can't eat meat, you can't drive, you will live in a city getting injected with soy slop while being blasted with radio frequencies. Then, once a week, the carnivores will allow you to eat one feedlot ribeye steak from Costco. Woo-wee! I'm losing my fucking mind. <laughs> the rest of this video is just a summary of what has been gone over continuing to pressure you to stop eating meat, at least reduce your meat consumption, and consume more of this plant-based slop for the good of the planet. I guess your BS plant-based marketing isn't working so well. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio, Billy Gates are gonna be out a bunch of money that they should have just burned in a goddamn driveway. Well, if anyone's gonna be scratching their head to solve the problem, I think humanity is grateful. Bill Gates is the one doing it. So on behalf of, I don't know, the world, we appreciate the efforts you're making in this. All right, I think I'm gonna be sick. <clears throat> Praising the devil himself. These people are so good at gaslighting that they have convinced everyone that meat is bad for your health, bad for the environment, and will likely be successful in their agenda in maintaining control of the food supply. What's even sadder is that you have carnivores trying to sell meat under the same guise of climate for regenerative agriculture. Just a bunch of special interest funded people getting you into their little group and maintaining control as always. So thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please like the video, subscribe, of course hit that bell icon above all guys, please share the video if you can. If you guys would like to support me further, definitely check out my book, The Ancestral Indigenous Diet, available on Amazon. You can go to Frankie's Free Range Meat for high quality, nutrient dense animal foods, uh, Frankie's Naturals for minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. And you can go to frank-stefano.com for one-on-one -on -one health consultations. You guys enjoy the rest of your Friday. Happy Valentine's Day, boys.